Okay. I didn't tell you I'll leave. I just said stand up. So uh, I'm sure we'll take a break here in a minute. If you need to take a bathroom break, go ahead and do it. Let me start out by saying what an honor it is for me to stand up here and speak to you today about sportsmanship. You know, uh, when they asked me to do this, I realized I had the easiest job. Not because sportsmanship is an easy thing to talk about, but because of who I'm speaking to. You know, uh, I've coached with some of you. I've coached against some of you. I've had uh, some of my sons play for you. And I can't say that there's a better group of coaches in the whole state of Florida, particularly with what y'all do with middle school. And uh, I want y'all to understand that uh, Ms. Jackson's correct. We've got a slice of heaven here in Okaloosa County. I had three boys go through middle school and high school here in the district. And I can tell you, as I look back and reflect, I wouldn't send them anywhere else in the world because what the coaches that touched them meant to them and the things they learned along the way that had to do with integrity, sticking to itness, those type of values cannot be measured. And I just want to say thank you to a fine group of coaches. I'm so glad to be associated with you and so proud of you. Let's everybody, give, let's everybody stand up and give yourself a round of applause for being great, great coaches. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start, and I won't, I'll try not to be long. I asked uh, Brian to give me the thing. If I go get long-winded, I, I prepared a PowerPoint so I don't ramble and I can go on. But I, you know, when I thought about doing this, talking about sportsmanship, I thought about images. Because what we do as middle school uh, coaches, and, and Mr. Johnson's correct when we saw, you know, we talked about, and, and Sheriff Ashley talking about integrity and the values. Of course, we want to win every game we play, and we should go out there with that mentality. But the things that we teach along the way of how to, how to carry yourself, how to respond, how to have integrity, how to do things correct, are those values that, um, that we like to instill. So, Okaloosa County School District, sportsmanship is important, our kids are watching. And um, so, that reminds me of a young player, Johnny. He was uh, getting started out with his Little League career. And he was a pretty good player, a hard trier, and had some talent. So uh, anyway, the, it was uh, a good way to do the ball game. And the coach called him over and said, Johnny, I want to ask you something. He said, what, coach? He said, do you understand what teamwork is and the value of teamwork and that it's not very nice to talk about your fellow teammates when they're out there making plays in the field? He said, yes, sir, coach, I understand that. He said, Johnny, do, do you understand that it's not whether or not we win the game, but how we play the game that matters the most? He said, Coach, I, I do understand that. He said, Johnny, do you understand when you're up there at bat that uh, the umpire's calling balls and strikes, it's not good sportsmanship to argue calls, to cuss at the umpire, call him names or attack him? He said, yes, sir, coach, I, I understand you're not supposed to do that. He said, Johnny, do you understand that it's poor sportsmanship when I pulled you off the field, you know, just a little bit ago to get one of your teammates playing time? It's not nice to call your coach a jackass? He said, yeah, coach, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I understand that. He said, well, good, Johnny. I want you to go over to the stands and explain all that to your mama. She's been doing all of that the whole game. <laughs> So, I say that because I know that we all can go there. Parents, coaches, players, administrators. Uh, I asked, when, when uh, Mr. Humphreys asked if I'd speak on sportsmanship, I said, I'm not sure that they want to hear from somebody that's been thrown out of two games, because I have been. And I tell you, I, I reflect back on that, and that's a low point in my career. It, it, it had no value in what we were trying to do to win the game. You become frustrated and you do those things. And I reflected back and I tried to change my mentality so I can reflect, you know, that's not gonna help you win. 
you're going you're to come across in games that you're trying to win, you're going to come across adversity in, in low times, but how you carry and conduct yourself is important for you to illustrate to your, to your players on proper what to do. So I, met, I came up <coughs> eight rules of sportsmanship, and uh, the, the first two have to do with ethics. And really, when we talk about sportsmanship, it really has to do with this whole meeting and what we're doing. Having integrity and being professional is important in the coaching world. Integrity to play by the rules, to play properly eligible players, to be professional, follow the rules for transportation, follow the rules for uh, <coughs> eligibility and, and, and turning in those lists and, and those type of things. Being professional with your fellow coaches across the league and then playing by the rules. So that, that speaks for itself. Uh, I was glad that Sheriff Ashley, when he was up there, they put my slide up there, but the word that he spoke mostly was integrity. And integrity is so important to us, it's important to our players, it's important to our parents, and it's important to the administration and the whole school. Three negatives are the next three things. Those are things that are good not to do. Don't argue. Don't make excuses or use excuses. It's not, it's not good for anybody. And certainly if, if you have the ability to win or, or you have a good team, don't be boastful about it. Be humble that you've got opponents to play and that you play the game in good spirit. And then the last three things, rules of sportsmanship have to do with people and probably the most important. It's important to remember to always give encouragement, whatever the situation. Build relationships, build relationships with your students, build relationships with your parents, build relationships with your fellow coaches, and then stay positive and keep a positive attitude. So those are eight rules. I know that you can, Mr. Humphreys put in your packet there some other rules, and there's many rules that we could follow for sportsmanship. Again, I've got the easy job because I know many of you, and I see you for, for a long period of time, and y'all Y'all do that and even more. So again, I know I'm talking to a, to a group of people that illustrate and do that, but I think uh, as we go through, because I, I got thrown out of one of those games when I was coaching high school football up in Alabama. I was under 40. I might have been even under 30. But then I got thrown out of one when I was just over 40. So I know that we can, you know, it's always a good reminder to, to go back and reflect and understand and to get with some of these older coaches like uh, Mr. Massey's mentored and get mentoring, get advice. Uh, I'm going to go through the next slides it, and I t told you I had images. So these images, some of them will be good, some of them will be bad, and some of them will be ugly. I won't say much because there's a bunch of slides here and uh, it'll take too long. They kind of speak for themselves. I may stop on a couple. But uh, we'll go through. Uh, this is something you don't want to do. You know, that's the image, and we said that we wanted to, we, uh, that, oh, I didn't know it was going to run through like this, but that's what can come up. Yeah, I've got, it's just got on mode, so we'll just do, it just speaks for itself right there. Players must have control. Don't want to win. That's not how you win, choking somebody. Here's some softball sportsmanship. Respect your opponents, win or lose. Congratulate your opponent. Be in charge of your emotions. Yeah, we all remember that. Kid didn't sign up for that. Foster your players. Coach respect, promote sportsmanship. Build relationships. Players are watching. Parents' responsibilities right there, and you can see those are that might be in Mr. Humphrey's thing as well. Yeah, on your teammates, you can't do those kind of things. Those aren't good. Those are ugly things. That's what you want to do. Build relations. There's an ugly thing. We remember that. Oh, we remember that right there. They can end careers. That was horrible. I was a fan of Woody Hayes. There's some track sportsmanship. Praise your players. There's Adjuron praising his players. Thank all participants. Do not blame others. Yeah, stress doesn't help. Coach Saban. There's Coach Saban hugging Coach. And that right there was a good statement. 
Yeah, I wish I had this. I don't know if I can stop this or not. <laughs> what was funny? I think that's a good statement right there. The score of any athletic event generally forgotten over time, so the actions of the players, coaches, and spectators are remembered. Next time you attend a high school game, think of how history will remember you. Good sports, show us how to play the game. There's some good fans. There's team and fan sportsmanship. There's those three things that we talked about. Any way you add up, I just put uh, ethics, respect, and integrity are always going to be a part of sportsmanship. It's a baseball sportsmanship checklist. Those are good things to put around your field house. Cheerleader sportsmanship. Dance respect, camaraderie. That's a bunch of dancers from different teams getting their picture. Swim, success, track sportsmanship. Respect and service, golf sportsmanship. Golf ethics, there's not golf ethics right there, so you can blow it in. Coach Chambers, uncontrolled tennis, tennis sportsmanship. And this is my last slide right here. Character matters. So this is John Wooden. He was a, a guy that won a lot of championships, and he did it with respect and sportsmanship, probably as much as any coach. And there's a great statement. Be more, and I heard somebody, I think Mr. Johnson talked about the word character. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are while your reputation is merely what others think you are. So with that, I appreciate you coming up here. I wish all of y'all the best. As we go through our spring seasons, I wish all y'all the best next year. Again, I'm so proud to be associated with all of you. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hum to uh, Mr. Humphreys. My, my section is uh, on eligibility, but before I go over eligibility, let me go over a couple of things. One is this reflection paper that you have in your folder. Uh, <coughs> Everyone in here should fill out some sort of reflection that you that you picked up from this meeting today and on your way out If you'll just put it in that box that's on the table and You know make sure your names on it in, in the in the school that you work at and then just drop it in the box Now is there anybody in here that this is their first time coming to this coaching seminar? All right, if it's your first time and you are on a professional certificate, you can get in-service points. Um, if you've done this a few times, you, you know, you can only get in-service points once. So if you've not ever received in-service points, put on here your answer to what you picked up from this meeting today, and then somewhere on there, write clearly that you, uh, this is your first time or you've never received in-service points and then put your email on here and I'll get back with you and, and, and I'll submit you to my learning plan if you need points. But for anybody who's done this in the past, they won't let us get points more than once. And then one other thing that's, that's in your handbook is the MSAC handbook that's in your folder is uh, the back pages are specific to each sport. Like there's a page on tennis, there's a page on golf, <laughs> There's a page on baseball, and these pages are not always updated all the time. Some of them have not been updated in a while, and there may be some information on your sport that's no longer relevant. Or there may be something that needs to be added to that page that you've started doing with the other coaches. So in that box on the way out, if you would take that page out of your manual that's in your handout, if you have any comments you'd like to add or suggestions you'd like taken off or added, I know in the handbook it says in softball that the girls don't wear metal cleats. But we're, we're changing that. It's going to be in the updated version. If, it had, if it's not already been changed. I don't know what version that was, was printed. But So if you see something in your sport that you, that you want to suggest, if you'll write it in, we'll, we'll bring it to the MSAC and we, we'll put it up for discussion. Because, you know, nobody knows your sport, you know, better than the coaches that are coaching it. 
I know, I know in tennis there was some discussion about coaching during the match, and so that, that may be something that needs to be discussed. Uh, I know in, in baseball someone's commented to me recently about a time limit, but I don't know what everybody's feelings are on, on, on the time limit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then the last announcement before I go over eligibility is before we leave today, and we'll, we, you know, we're going to try to be out of here on time, if not a few minutes early, I, I need to just speak with the baseball coaches from each school for just a couple of minutes and just go over something uh, that we need to clear up today. All right. For eligibility, eligibility is the criteria that a student must meet in order to be able to play. And the criteria that he has to meet is the responsibility of that is all on the coach. We all turn in our eligibility list to show River for every sport. And as long as everything is going smooth like it usually does and everybody does what they're supposed to do, eligibility is not really a problem. But once it becomes a problem, it's not a little problem. It gets big in a hurry. And, and you know, this year we've probably had one eligibility issue. Uh, I can imagine years we don't have any. But whenever it is a problem, it always falls back on the coach. Um, and so what I'm going to do is go over eligibility stuff so that you can be informed, so that you know what to check, where to check, and who to ask. I, and I'll give you all an example. Um, Baker School won the, they went and played in the state football championship this year for varsity football in their class. And Baker lost the game. Um, they played good in, in, you know, a couple mistakes here and there costs, you know, they couldn't overcome, but ended up losing the game. A month later, the, the team that they played was turned in for playing an ineligible player. So that team had to forfeit all of its games for the whole year. So who won the state championship? <coughs> Nobody. The, the position's vacated for this year, and it'll go down in history as vacated. Baker does not get the win, so Baker students feel robbed. The, the team that beat Baker, one player was ineligible. He played varsity football for five years, and that made him ineligible. So everyone else on that team felt robbed because they felt like someone just took the title from me. So whose fault, if there was some fault, who, whose fault would it be it's always going to fall back on the coach. Everyone I've spoken to about that whole incident, everybody either implies or comes out and says, there's no way that coach didn't know. I can't believe that coach tried to pull that. So even if it's an accident, even if it's something you just overlooked, it's, it's the responsibility of the coach to make sure that the kids you put out there are eligible. So eligibility, I wish we, I have an eligibility sheet in your handout, and it's a pretty good summary. Um, I wish there was some place that just listed all of the eligibility issues, but there's so many different variables to eligibility that sometimes you need to ask. If, if it's something that's real general, like uh, school board policy, you gotta have a 2.0, you gotta be the right age. You can't have played nine or ten semesters of middle school football. Um, those are pretty simple. So you can, you can refer to school board policy for the eligibility stuff that Mr. Johnson went over. Also eligibility is your athletic packet. If a student does not have an entire athletic packet turned in, in its entirety, that student's not eligible. If they don't have a parent permission form that's notarized, that, that student's not eligible. If they don't have a current physical, that student's not eligible. If they've not been baseline tested for the concussion, that, that student's not eligible. They're not eligible to, to participate in your sport. Um, Mr. Humphrey, they point out that that has to be done, the eligibility and all the paperwork before the first day of tryouts. Before the student tries out, they have to have an entire packet. And it has to have a physical parent permission form. The only thing we don't do is you don't have to baseline test everybody that tries out. We'll let you let them try out, but once you pick your team, all of those students need to be baseline tested for concussion protocol. We have had instances 
where it was overlooked and the student went down, got a concussion, the parents signed the form. So we went to go get the baseline test and it wasn't there. So, and that's never good. So always make sure that you, you baseline test them because if they don't have a baseline test, they're not eligible. You're actually playing an ineligible player. Um, so, yeah. If the parent signs off that they do not want their child baseline tested, then they don't have to be baseline tested. Yeah. So the athletic packet is an eligibility piece. The school board policy is an eligibility piece. And we, we default to FHSAA for the specifics. FHSAA's eligibility pa pages are about 10 pages long, and they're always changing. Um, Anytime that the legislation writes new laws, those laws affect athletic eligibility. And most recently, last summer, they wrote a bunch. It used to be that you had to be attending a school, otherwise you're not eligible. Now you don't even have to be attending that school. You could be at a special school ran by the district, like STEM. A STEM student can be eligible to play at a school. They can be homeschooled. They could be online school, or Florida virtual school, Oakley's <coughs> online. Those students are all eligible to participate, but you just need to make sure that you know before that kid comes and tries out with you, are they eligible? So if a student comes to you and they are from a special school ran by the district, then our procedure is before they try out, you ask that student for a letter from the director of the program that they attend their school at. And that letter just has to be one sentence that says, little Johnny is gonna participate in softball at Meg's Middle School. And, and the letter gives that person permission to play softball and they can only be eligible to participate at one school each year. They can't try out for four different softball teams and then pick which one. Per sport. Per sport. And that's from a Florida statute. Yeah. The, the language there is that they are suggested to play at their home zone school or a school that they could waiver to attend. And the waiver to attend, you know, there's an open enrollment rule coming through, and Mr. Horton will be, will be here in a little while to explain that. It, it's it, if that school has room to take a student, so you just can't pick a school if that school's at capacity. <coughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. If, 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 if they're enrolled at your school, they're, they're going to be eligible to play at your school. There are students who are enrolled in a special school like STEM or they're enrolled online and they just go to online all day and they're not enrolled in your school. And those would be the, the special circumstances. But if they're enrolled in your school, they're eligible to play at your school. Yeah, well, if, if they have, let's say they have three classes at your school and then they have three classes online, you can get their online grades and calculate their GPA. Yeah. The only way that you wouldn't have a GPA is if that student was homeschooled I, I believe if they were homeschooled and they were being graded on a portfolio, but I would check with a guidance counselor on that. A homeschool student does not have a GPA if they have uh, are graded on a portfolio. But all the, everyone else should have grades. Check with them, Tony Kitchens for homeschool and see how they're being graded. And then if they're getting grades, calculate those grades in with the classes that they have at your school. Yeah. So, so it, in, 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 for eligibility for coaches, if you have a player come to you, it's probably not an issue if that player is attending your school and he played for you last year and was eligible last year. It's probably a good, everything's good. If you ever have a player that comes to you and has moved into this area and you're not sure, the best thing to do is ask your athletic director, and then your athletic director can ask your coach or they can, you can call me. 
but ask and get some sort of guidance before you play the kid. It, it'll take about one or two days to get an answer, um, depending on, you know, whatever the special circumstances are. But we've had a lot of eligibility questions come through and we get an answer within one or two days and, and, and get the kid going. So if, if, you, if you've got a question, ask, and, and we'll get the question to the right people and get you an answer as fast as possible. And the last point I'm going to make on eligibility is whenever they were writing these uh, laws about uh, athletic eligibility in schools, they made a requirement that the school district has to put in eligibility factors in the code of conduct. So in your code of conduct at the beginning of this year, there's this uh, little column added for eligibility. It's probably the length of the page. And it's just the minimal requirements. It's not all of it, but you can always refer to it for the minimal requirements for eligibility. If, it, if what you're looking for is not in that code of conduct that we pass out to the kids at the beginning of the school, then, then ask your athletic director or principal or you can give me a call and, and we'll try to get you an answer. Okay? It, are there any questions on eligibility? If I was to leave you something, it would be, if you've got a question, just ask before you play somebody. Everybody's good? Then, good morning. I've got, uh, I've got a couple of parts today. So um, the first thing here I want to talk a little bit about is eligibility. But before I get started, um, I wanted to tell you a story about a coaching experience that I had. I was coaching at Crestview High School and uh, had all my, my paperwork ready. And we were doing, um, it was basically a conditioning session. It was a tryout. And, uh, and so the kids were running. And one boy who, I mean, he was in great shape. He looked like he was in great shape. And he was a new kid to the school. He collapsed, um, was having, his heart was racing. I had to call 911. He was unresponsive. Um, I don't think I'd be standing here in front of you guys had I not had all my paperwork in order before the first day of practice. I mean, it was a tryout. Um, and so it was a scare. One of the scariest things I had to deal with as a coach, I thought he was going to die. He didn't, but it was, it was a scary thing. So you don't think about, hey, I, I know how it is. I mean, you get 70 in some schools, packets, kids want, they're going to give you your, uh, the um, eligibility paperwork, and, but they don't give you everything at the same time. And hey, I don't have, I don't have your birth certificate. I don't have your, your physical form. And all those things have to be done before they try out. Now, chances are that's never going to happen to you. But if it does, like Brian said, it's all on you. And so you don't want that to happen, but it could happen. It happened to me, and um, it only happened once, <laughs> but that was enough. So just wanted to share that story with y'all. Um, so Brian wanted to talk, me to talk a little bit about eligibility, and uh, there's a little overlap in some of the things that Brian said, some of the things that Steve Horton has said, is going to say. Um, one of the things is if you don't know that those students that are trying out are enrolled at your school. I mean, you know a lot of them. Hey, you know that kid. You've seen him in the halls. But if there's a kid you don't recognize, <clears throat> that's the kid you got to make sure is enrolled in your school. And so you might say, hey, don't, don't participate in, in, in tryouts today or don't participate today until I check with the office and make sure that you're one of my students. Because we ran into a situation, the eligibility issue that Brian was talking about, where a kid had tried out for two different schools and made both teams. Well. The answer was he couldn't play for either one because he made himself ineligible by trying out twice. He tried to hedge his bets, tried, to, tried out for two different, team, two different teams and made them both and didn't play for any. Um, so um, that, that's, uh, just make sure that they are your students. And if they're not your students, there are special circumstances. We can find out if they're a STEM student or a homeschool student. There's ways that they can, they can be eligible. And there's always an exception that's not in these, in these rules. And so if you have a situation um, and you have a question, call Brian um, and, and it will look at that. Um, okay. All right. The next thing is um, the uh, eligibility of students will be reported by the principal. And that's, they're turning that in to uh, Shoal River. And so that's... Again, it's your, it's your responsibility to have that, have that taken care of. Um, 
So one other thing that I wanted to mention um, is that, you know, Ms. Jackson in her um, introduction talked about school start times. And uh, so we are having a meeting tomorrow night, and it's at the Central Complex. It will, um, changing the times will affect um, extracurricular activities and some other things. And, and there's, t just like anything, there's pros and cons to it. And so, it, you know, it, we would want someone from your school, someone from, you know, your community, just to be there to, to just hear what's being said. There's going to be several presentations made, and um, y'all can make up your own mind on how it's going to affect you, uh, or if it is going to affect you, and I, and I think it will. But it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have somebody there or, or you yourself, or somebody there that can kind of communicate on, hey, this is what, this is what they're talking about, this is what, what might be coming down the pike, uh, we, we might need to know about that so you can um, be aware and make your community aware. 